I may be live. Um, I'm going to let my iPad catch up for a few moments and then I will check and make sure that you can see me okay. So bear with me, I'm just going to lean across my desk um, and have a look at my other screen and check everything looks alright. Let's have a look. Oh, and there I am. It looks like I'm there. So that is good news. All right, I'm just going to see if, make sure I can see any comments. Okay, turn down the volume on that because you don't want to hear me twice. Right, okay, so I'm back and I'm just going to kind of sneakily turn my eyes and check that you can see me on the screen and it takes it a moment or two to catch up. So, um, right, that doesn't look too bad. So, I hope some of you are here listening with me. I can't see yet if anybody is, but hopefully you are. Um, it's been an interesting morning, about half past eight. Um, a truck and a load of men with lots of tools and ladders and chainsaws and a very large wood chipper and a tipper truck turned up um, just next door. Now, my garden is that way, um, not very far away. If you saw my photograph that I posted earlier, um, they are literally the other side of the fence. Uh, I knew my neighbours were having some work done on their walnut tree. They did not tell me it was going to be this morning. So um, so that might prove interesting. Now shut all the doors and windows. It's very warm in here, so I may have to turn the fan on in a minute. Um, but I'm really hoping the noise isn't going to disturb you. I think just this minute they have stopped for a tea break. So let's hope that's going to be an extended one. And we'll get most of this done before they come back and start chipping. The, uh, yeah, they're pretty noisy. They're also quite noisy amongst themselves as well. There's been some fairly choice language. So um, we'll see, we'll see how things are going. I'm just gonna lean over now to my iPad and see what's happening there. Um, I don't know if anybody's here with me. I don't know if anybody has commented yet. It'd be lovely to see who's here and who isn't. Um, okay, I can't see anything yet, but, but things do update. So few things to say first of all. Um, so I've told you about the noise from next door. Um, I've put a note on my door and asked any delivery people to please just leave any packages and not ring the doorbell and wait for me to turn up and say yes thank you you've signed for my parcel that's fine. Um, my son lives with us and, uh, and he seems to have a never-ending stream of things arriving in the post. I'm always having to say thank you very much and take parcels in for him. So I'm hoping that won't interrupt me today. Um, but other than the dog, I'm all on my own in the house today, so there isn't anyone else to open the door. So we'll see. That is the joy of a live um, video, isn't it? You just don't know what's going to happen. All right then, so if you've got any questions, if you've got any comments, do please type them in and I will address them as we go as far as I can. Um, and uh, if I don't manage to see it, I will certainly go through all the comments when I've finished and make sure that I answer any questions that you have. Um, whether you're watching this live, whether you're watching it on Facebook on the replay, or indeed if you're watching it in just a little while's time on YouTube, it really helps me if you can like it, if you can share it with anybody you think might be interested in seeing it, any crafty friends you may have. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, or even if you're not, go over to my YouTube channel, which has the same name as my Facebook um, group and page, um, Handmade at Home with Sally Bowman. And, and if you can subscribe, that will be absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. I'm very new to all this online stuff, so anything you can do will really help my business during these very, very difficult times where we can't all meet together. All right, I've got a few notes I'm glancing down at to make sure that I haven't missed. All right, so I suppose the first question is, have you got your catalogue? Um, I do hope it's arrived, those of you that I've sent them out to. Um, if you don't think I will have sent you one, then um, drop a comment, um, or if, if you're an existing customer. If you're not, then you can contact me via Facebook um, or via my YouTube channel, and just let me know and I will post one out to you. You can also go to my website, which is Sally Bowman dot stampin up dot net and leave a message there too so there's lots of ways you can get in touch with me and i'm very happy to post your catalog out if you have got a catalog at home then do grab it um, and come back quickly because i'm going to be pointing out a few things in there in a minute for you i'm not going to go through it page by page because you're perfectly capable of doing that yourself but i will point out some of my favorite things um, some returning items and uh, one or two things that you might not know about so um, it'll be helpful if you've got that in front of you all right, I can see something's come up on my iPad. I'm just going to have a look and see. Oh, Michelle, you're here. Thank you very much. 
how nice to have you here so I can see that Michelle is watching um, and I'm hoping that uh, a few others are coming a few others have told me they can a few have told me they're gonna watch it on the replay but it's lovely to be here all right now what I'm gonna do is cover over the lens on my camera so that you don't get seasick um, I'm gonna turn it round so that you can see what's on my desktop and then we can look through the camera at uh, the catalog and I've got some new products to show you and I'm also going to make up the make and take card pack that I sent out with the catalogues. So if you haven't done yours yet, then you'll be able to either work along with me or make it afterwards. So bear with me. I'm just going to cover up the camera. I'll try and remember to keep talking to you. That's something I tend to forget. Um, but I will be back very shortly. Don't go anywhere. I'm forgetting to talk to you I'm just trying to sort out the settings on this just to make sure that everything is looking as it should okay so I'm just going to make sure that things are not Hopefully, anyway, I'm not showing back to front and upside down. So, yes, it's always an exciting moment when I reveal the camera lens, which I'm about to do, and we see whether everything has worked or not. So there'll be a little bit more fiddling around as I remove this, just to make sure that everything is straight and that you can see. So bear with me while I get everything into view. I've also got one eye on my iPad because that's where I can see what you can see. Okay, so we're nearly there. I'm just moving things around still to make sure things are hopefully centered and nice and easy for you to see. Okay, nearly there. Right, so I can't get absolutely everything on screen, but I can get most of my catalogue cover on. And if you've got yours in front of you, then that should be okay. Right, so I think we're there. All right, so the new catalogue then. The front is obviously very Christmassy. I don't know about you, I cannot think about Christmas in August, really. Um, I mean, I am doing Christmas crafting videos later on today. So if you pop back here later on, um, you will find them. I'll be here at uh, 12.30, at 2.30 and at 4.30 showing you some more autumn crafting first and then there's two sessions of Christmas crafting. Um, but, but it's tough. I'm not really an August crafter and I'm certainly not a Christmas in July crafter, although I know lots of people are. But, uh, but never mind. Uh, Christmas is on the cover and Christmas will come whether we like it or not. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to show you um, a, just a few things that is good to know about in the catalogue. So if I'm turning now to page two where it shows you a couple of icons here. So one is this one that looks like a clock and there are so many projects, uh, project samples in the catalogue, but if you see anything that's got a clock by it, then it's something which is either going to be a quicker project to make or something that is going to really work if you want to make more than one. Um, often at Christmas, you might sit down and make a batch of cards that are all the same, even if you don't do that any other time of the year. So these will be ones that will really work for that. Um, this little mini machine here, it says little machine and mini. Um, this is for the mini die cutting machine, which is coming, but it's not yet available. You will be able to order the larger version of the new die cutting machine in September, but you can't order the mini one yet. So by all means, look at those projects and they are ones particularly sized to work with the smaller machine for those people who are going to end up with only a small machine. Um, but these projects will work perfectly well with a large machine as well, but uh, that's just to make you aware. 
and then finally just above those there's this little thing which says step it up what they quite often do with samples is they'll show you more than one version of really what's the same project they always start with the simplest one on the left and then as you go towards the right there is a little bit more added to it maybe more layers or embellishments or more technique um, so that's a good way of seeing what else you can do with a project right so I'm just finding my other purple tabs here there's only a few of them oh there we are that's right so if you page through now towards the end of your catalogue and I've moved now to page 71 I'm not completely ignoring the pages in between I'm going to come back to those but I did want to point out that at the back of the catalogue there is um there are two in fact kinds of index the first one is an index of all the bundles so these are all the stamp sets which are paired with either a punch or a set of dies and sold at 10 percent off when you buy both items you don't have to buy both items but if you do and you use the special bundle code then you will get 10 percent off and it's worth noting that the samples they show here in this bundle index are different ones to the ones that are shown in the main body of the catalogue so if you've got your eye on a bundle if you turn to the bundle index Index, you'll see yet yet another way that you could use it so that's the bundle index and then just moving on to page 76 this is where the second index starts now this is something fairly new that they've started to do um, and it's more of a pictorial index so they subdivide everything in the catalogue by type so this is the stamps page I'm showing you here for instance and they pick out one of the images that they think might stick in your mind or be typical of the stamp set and they show a section of that along with what the stamp set is which page to find it on how much it costs the code that kind of thing but that can make it much easier to find something so if you turn to the back starting on page 76 you'll find these pictorial pages um, and they've done it here for punches they've done the same for dies they've also done it for embossing folders and the card display which I'm going to talk about in a minute um, they've done it all the way through you've got kits you've got all the embellishments here the ribbons I must say I think the embellishments and ribbons in this catalogue are absolutely fabulous um, you've got the papers here and so on. So don't miss that index because I do think that is really helpful. All right, so I'm turning back again now. Um, and I'm going to look at all my pink tabs here. Now, I could actually have marked every single page in the catalogue with a pink tab because they're my favourite things. But I've try tried, tried to stay reasonable with them. So these go through in page order rather than in any particular um, favourite order. So I'm on page nine and I just wanted to point out to you the mini coffee carrier and mini coffee cups. Um, these are becoming more and more popular in this country. Um, I, I know we're all trying to use reusable cups when we go to coffee shops, assuming we can find one that is open, depending on where we live. Um, but here these are smaller ones and they are especially for gifts. So this little carrier will hold two of these little mini cups which come with lids and if you look on the opposite page you can see a couple of ideas for using them. So you can put your gifts in here whether they are homemade ones, um, fudge or brownies or something like that. Maybe some mincemeat you've made yourself for Christmas um, and you can decorate the carrier and you can pop either a couple of cups in here or in this case they've put in one of the cups filled with something nice I'm sure and a little bag so you could put hot chocolate mix in the cup for instance and add a bag of marshmallows and then make it really pretty and I just think this is such a nice idea for gifts for maybe neighbours, um, people that you want to give something that's relatively a token gift not an expensive gift to but you do just want to give something to they'd be lovely for co-workers, um, teachers if we are back at school <laughs> in time um, so yeah I think that's really lovely and there is um, a stamp set designed to work with that and in fact two stamp sets but this one here is bundled with a set of dies which will cut the paper to fit perfectly around the coffee cup plus a lot of the decorations so I think that's a really fun idea it's something a little bit different So this is one of the stamp sets that was on that page and it's the Wrapped in Christmas stamp set. I do particularly like it for the whole variety of greetings there are in here and um, 
there are stamps in here that will work for other times of year as well a little something for you I mean that's going to work the whole time isn't it this little decorative piece here is beautiful uh, if you watch my a uh, quick Christmas card session at four o'clock, uh, four thirty. Sorry, this afternoon. You'll see I've used this set. This one here is beautiful, coloured in, um, and that's what I've done in in some of the projects this afternoon. So if you're wanting a new greeting set for Christmas, this is a really good one, um, and it's quite a good size as well. With a few layers, you could use these on the front of a card. The sample here has just used repeat stamping to really turn the sentiment into the focal point. So it's an, a really useful set that one, I think. If you have a look over to page 15, this is the Poinsettia Place Suite. There's some really sumptuous projects here um, with lots and lots of layers and beautiful colours here. And I just wanted to point out that this is an incredibly versatile suite. It's beautiful for packaging. It's gorgeous for cards, whether they're fairly simple ones that you want to make multiples of or ones that you really want to add a lot to. There's beautiful papers, including some flocked paper, ribbon. There's the bundle of dies and stamps, these stunning beaded pearls here. Um, and the suite goes on over the page as well with more samples. So the Poinsettia Place Suite I think is really worth another look. Take, a, take your time and really look at what they've done with the samples here. They're absolutely beautiful. Alright, so paging on my next pink tab is page 25. No, it's not. It's page 26. <laughs> there we go. Um, it's shown on page 25 as well. But what I really wanted to point out was this set here, which if you like colouring is a really nice set. Um, every time this is bought, £2.50 will be donated to a variety of charities devoted to adoption, to foster care and infertility. So um, it's a £17 stamp set, it's not a very expensive one, but it's, it's doing more than just helping you with your crafting. And actually this, as well as being lovely for Christmas things, will be perfect all year. Um, brilliant for new home cards, um, somebody who's moving, so those are, it's a really nice set. Again, there are dies that go with it as well, and you can buy them as a bundle. Um, but I just wanted to point out that is our Making a Difference set in this catalogue. Turning over to page 28, I, well, defy you really not to love this stamp set here with these lovely festive animals. Um, I live in the New Forest. We have these beautiful Highland cows roaming free. Um, so I see those every time I go out in my car. And I just love this one with the decorations hanging from his antlers. Um, but if you want something slightly less uh, dramatic, uh, you've got this beautiful sheep here. He's got little bells and holly round his neck. Or maybe just a cosy cat for Christmas. Um, and as always, there are lots of ideas on the opposite side of the page for making projects with them. But I just think that's such a fun fun Christmas stamp set. If you've received a catalogue pack from me I just wanted to highlight that the snowflakes I included as a little gift from me are these here on page 29. Um, if you've got some in your hands you'll have seen how beautiful they are. They're really iridescent. They come in two different colours of iridescence and they're beautiful on your project and you'll see me use them later on this afternoon in some Christmas crafting projects. All right, so I'm turning on for my next pink tab, which is on page 34. Oh, and I can see Candy's here. Hello, Candy. I know Candy had something to do earlier today, but it's lovely that you're here with me. Thank you for joining me. I hope everything went all right in town for you. Ah, so here we are on page 34, then. I just wanted to show you this beautiful holly set. Um, it's £16, which I think is a steal, actually, for a stamp set. It's made of photopolymer, so it's see-through, and you've got these lovely holly outlines, and I can see that you would be able to create wreaths and garlands with those. You've got some solid stamps here to colour them in, as well as some solid berries to colour them in, and lining those up will be simple as the stamps are um, see-through and then you've got two sets of words here as well so I think that's an absolutely fantastic Christmas set if your budget's not very big for Christmas crafting I reckon that would be one to go for um, you can make garlands and add ribbon 
Um, and if you've got a little bit more, this beautiful paper here, which I'll be talking about, um, I'll mention it probably later if I remember when I talk about the returning favourites. This was in here last year and was hugely popular in traditional reds and greens, um, but the holly images on here work brilliantly with the stamps. But also everything else in there is perfect with this for slightly more traditional Christmas cards, which I must admit generally is the way I go. I'd much rather have traditional things than novelty items at Christmas. Over the page on page 35, this is not a very good picture, but this beautiful embossing folder is really stunning and you can see it much better in the samples. It's the Evergreen Forest folder. I'm waiting for mine to arrive. Um, you can particularly see it here on the foil, but also they've used it on the background card. And then here you can see it highlighted where they've added ink over the top. So as I say, I'm just pointing it out because I think it's a lovely folder, but it's not very easy to see. Um, it's very hard to show embossing folders effectively in the catalogue, but it is absolutely beautiful. So, Snowflake Suite here, Snowflake Splendor, um, all I'm going to say is come back at 2.30 when I will be showing you everything in detail and um, doing some craft, showing you some craft projects I've made with it. That is my favourite suite in the catalogue for Christmas. Absolutely love it. It's also going to be featuring in my uh, Christmas extravaganza. So watch this space. I don't know about you, but I never have enough space at Christmas to display cards. Um, I also don't have enough space um, at home to display cards generally, whether it's for a birthday or for um, things in my craft room or whatever. So this card display stand is something completely new. We've not had anything like this before. Um, it's really solid. Um, I won't show you mine because it's going to be difficult to, to fit it under the camera and actually the picture here is much clearer. But it's, it's really heavy duty. It's very strong. Um, it's straightforward to put together and it comes with these little library clips which work a bit like a bulldog clip just to clip your display on there and then you can of course take things down and put new things up. I think this would fit perfectly onto a table maybe in your hall or a side table in your lounge. Um, it's a really interesting item so I encourage you to have a look at that because I think there's a lot of us that will find that a really handy addition. I love this In the Pines bundle. Again, I'm waiting for mine to arrive. Um, I love anything with trees, um, probably because I live in the New Forest and I'm surrounded by trees. Um, I think this is just gorgeous. This will work all year round. Uh, we've got a thinking of you sentiment in there for a start, as well as a Christmas one. It's a bundle, so it comes with dies which cut out the trees, some of them in great detail. You may be able to see from the images here. And I just love them. I think you can build them up in lots of different ways. They'll be brilliant for men's cards, obviously for Christmas cards as well. I think they would work beautifully for sympathy cards, um, those cards that we never want to have to make, but, um, but sometimes have to. It'll also coordinate really nicely with all sorts of other things that we've got in the annual catalogue. Um, Rooted in Nature comes to mind, Winter Woods comes to mind. Um, so anything with countryside images, animals, leaves, those are all going to work with this. And as I say, I think it's a really year round set. So do have a look at the In the Pines bundle on page 43. Another all year set is this one on page 51, which is Life is Beautiful. So this set here, um, it's got this gorgeous tree image, which I really like. There's so much movement in it. And then you've got a selection of little things that you can add to it. So you've got leaves, which of course could be autumn leaves, but could also be spring leaves. You've got this dotty image, which could give you a more abstract look, but could also stand in for blossom or leaves. Up here, you've got snowflakes. And then you've got this sweet little birdhouse to hang from the branches. And then a bit of a shadow here as well and some words on there too um, this is another really reasonably priced stamp set it's 16 pounds which i think is great um, and if you want something for year-round crafting i think this would be perfect i do have a card here which was given to me by my friend and team member carol and it probably won't show brilliantly on here but she has used the stamp set for this um, not only is it a stunning card, um, but I really love the stamp set she's used. So she's used the dotty image and the leaves on the trees and then she's added all sorts of die cuts um, and flowers. Um, you can see the little birdhouse there. So a really beautiful card, but it also does show how lovely this tree is. Right, just a couple more of my favourites. 
people and they've started they've started up the uh, chipper next door so um, I'm hoping that's not going to take away from your enjoyment too much all right I wanted to show you this plaid tidings paper I've actually got some of the paper here so I can show you both sides in more detail um, this is a huge stack of paper it's six inches square you get 48 sheets in there and there are 12 different designs with patterns different patterns on either side and you get four sheets of each so there's a lot in there now I think this is great for Christmas and it matches really really nicely with one of the carryover sets from last year perfectly plaid which has got all sorts of trees in it and you'll find that in the annual catalogue and I'll show you some samples this afternoon using this paper. That's in my last session at 4.30. Um, but I just think it's so versatile. It's great for Christmas. It's brilliant for men's cards. It will work with all kinds of stamps. Um, you can pop it on boxes. It's really, really useful, I think. So I'll move that out of the way for now. And I'm just going to show you the whole pack of paper, both sides. So you've got lots of different colours in here, lots of different patterns. Some are bright, some are darker. Just a huge variety. And if you're looking again for something that will do you for all kinds of occasions, then I think this is definitely one of those. It'll be beautiful die cut or punched. So um, I think every crafter needs a pack of this in their stash. There we go. So get four sheets of each of these for a total of 48 sheets so plenty of scope for crafting plenty of scope for making multiple cards of the same design because you've got several sheets of each design um, and actually lots of them you could you could use with the same card design because they're similar colors or similar scales so there we go that is the plaid tidings paper set all right and my last favorite to show you has to be on page 82 because this is the best deal in the catalogue. Uh, when you join Stamping Up, um, you get access to so many things, to special crafting sessions, to special online groups where you can share projects and see other people's creativity. You get all your own products at a discount and whether you would like to run classes, to start up an online business, um, to sell your cards or just to get a discount on your own personal crafting then this really is a fantastic deal. Um, we call what you get your starter kit so it's your first order uh, as a demonstrator. It costs you £99 but you get £130 worth of product so that's £31 worth for free. Um, it's shipped to you for free, you can choose anything you like to go in your starter kit from any current catalogues and it's an absolute brilliant deal. There is no catch with joining Stamping Up. Um, there is no uh, requirement for um, the amount you have to buy. You are not required to sell to other people, although you'll probably find that when your family and friends know that you can get these lovely things for them that you will want to, but you don't have to. Um, you can stay a demonstrator for as long as you like, and we call you a demonstrator even if you just demonstrate for yourself in your craft room. Um, and there's nothing to pay back or give back should you decide to leave. So if you're interested in this, uh, do let me know. There's so many good reasons to join Stamping Up. Um, it's the best thing I ever did. I've made so many lovely friends uh, through Stamping Up. Um, so if you're interested in that, then just contact me. You can also go to my website and there's more information on this page as well. So that are, that is all my favourite things. I'm going to talk very briefly about some things that have come out of hibernation and then I'm going to do some crafting with you. So we had a few things that were incredibly popular this time last year um, that sold out multiple times. I had lots of people waiting for them to come back in and because they were so popular they've brought some of them back which is fantastic. It's the first time Stamping Up has ever done this. Um, so they're marked in the catalogue as a returning fave because that's what they are. So the first one I'll just highlight to you is this lovely Christmas countdown calendar. I've seen lots of these made up. They are absolutely beautiful. It comes as a kit and down the bottom of page six you can see everything that you get. Um, you get an advent calendar box, if you like, with a number of drawers. Um, they come, it comes with the fronts 
to put on your drawers it comes with sets of numbers and all kinds of stickers and of course you can decorate these exactly as you like I've seen one of these decorated um, in a way that was not at all an advent calendar um, you could do it as a birthday countdown you could have them as a holiday countdown I've even seen one where people have decorated both sides of the drawers so the side that pushes in is one decoration and then the one that faces out is another so you could have a Christmas one but you could also have a non Christmas one and on the opposite side here they give you some suggestions for that so it's a really really fun project if you've got grandchildren then I think this is something to seriously consider you could make it with them or you could give it to them for them to make at home um, it comes with instructions as everything does so absolutely brilliant um, it's near enough um, 12 inches square so it's a really nice size all right, so my next returning favourite is just on the opposite page to that, page seven, and it's this product medley, which is a whole box of goodies which all work together. So this particular one has a stamp set and dies, it has lots of paper, it has sticker sheets, um, it has embellishments, lots of paper, so it's absolutely beautiful. This was really popular last year and they've brought it back. And it is traditional reds and greens and golds, but because they're quite bright shades, it's a little bit more modern than, than some traditional things can be. So take a look at that. I think that's going to be a really good one if you want lots of bits and pieces for your Christmas crafting. Another returning favourite is the Christmas Gleaming bundle of stamps and punches and the brightly gleaming paper. Um, again, this sold out multiple times last year. It's absolutely beautiful. The paper is greens, blues, teals, peacocks, copper on it. Absolutely lovely. Lots of copper foiling. The stamp set is a really versatile one with images and words and the two punches here punch out your bauble images so absolutely brilliant have a good look at that and they've maintained the 10% off when you buy the bundle of stamps and punches so that's really nice so that discount is still there so I have a bit of a weakness for a moose I've never seen a moose in the wild I would dearly love to um, and until I do I shall make do <laughs> with my merry moose uh, punch and stamps um, this is a returning favourite. I just think they're lovely. Um, here they've paired it with um, a pine tree and some pine cone and pine needle paper, natural tones. There's a banner up here. Uh, I think it's a really fun addition to Christmas. But that was in last year's catalogue and it's back. I'm very pleased it's back because I really enjoyed using that last year. Something else that has returned are these little jingle bells. These are perfect to wrap around um, parcels with some ribbon or twine on them. You could make Christmas ornaments with them, Christmas earrings. Um, they're really lovely. They do jingle and they come in three colours. So, yeah, what's not to like, really? Uh, the next returning favourite is, if I can find it, there we go. The paper which I showed you already, the Toile Tidings. Um, that's the paper which I showed you in conjunction with the holly leaf stamps. So that's a really, really useful festive paper. Greens and reds are my favourite at Christmas. Although maybe these are my favourite <laughs> blues and silvers. I can't decide. This feels like frost paper was immensely popular last year. I had customers waiting ages for it. Um, it went out of stock numerous times. One side of the paper is silver and white. Um, with sort of foliage and snow images. The other side is photographic. So you've got photographs of snow, photographs of winter foliage, pine trees with snow on them. Absolutely beautiful. The colours are soft and pretty and this is stunning paper. So you definitely need a pack of this if you don't have any left from last year. I've got a little bit left but I will be topping up my stocks with that because you really don't have to do much with it to make a stunning card or box decoration. Right, um, and almost, almost finally, there we go, I knew it was here somewhere, snowflake sequins, again these went out of stock 
numerous times last year. So these are little stars and snowflakes and regular shaped sequins in white and iridescent colours and some silver in there too. They're really beautiful. Um, if you join me this afternoon at 2.30 you'll see some of these in action on my snowflake crafting. They're beautiful. And I think, I think that's it. I think, yeah, my other yellow markers are ones that I've already shown you. All right. So lots and lots to look at in the catalogue. If you haven't already read it from cover to cover, settle down after this and make yourself a cuppa and have a look. Um, lots of nice things in there. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you'd like to order from this, if you've got a catalogue from me, I sent you an order form. You can order online at my website, which is sallybowman.stampinup.net. Um, or you can give me a call, you can send me an email, there's lots of ways to order um, and all the details that you need to get hold of me are on the back of your catalogue. Um, I've got new classes coming for the autumn and the winter which will be using items from in here. Um, I'm just working out my dates um, and so on at the moment and I will make sure that those are posted on all my social media um, and emailed around to everyone on my mailing list so if you're not on my mailing list but would like to be then do please let me know so I'm going to move that aside for now and I'm going to bring in some of the autumn products um, I'm going to show you the gilded autumn bundle uh, and sweet well sweet in fact as well as the bundle which you'll find on page 44 so here we are I've got lots of samples I've made using this, which uh, I'm showing in my next crafting session at 12.30. Um, there are lots and lots of things in the catalogue to look at as well, but as the make and take I sent out with the catalogue uses items from this suite, I thought I'd give you a closer look um, at the papers and the stamps and so on, and then I'll get on and make up your project so that you can see how to do that. So there is a bundle of stamps and punches, first of all. This is absolutely lovely. I always love it when we get new punches. The stamps have got acorns and autumn leaves and foliage and lots of words as well. Uh, they're in photopolymer and it's a two-step stamping set. In other words, you can stamp an outline and then you can come in with a second step and colour it in with the solid stamp. The little punches You've got an oak leaf and, and a maple leaf, um, could be a sycamore I suppose, and an acorn. And these punch out some of the paper, which I'll show you in a moment, um, and they also punch out the stamped shapes. So here I have actually stamped everything and punched it out to show you. So the, the dark brown shows you the stamp as it actually is, the individual images, and then the light brown is where I've used that second stage and filled them in. So you can see you've got the outline stamp, you've got the colouring in stamp, and then when you use the two together, this is what you get. So I've shown you the maple leaf and the oak leaf, the acorn, now all those three can be punched out. But additionally, you've got this little leaf here, you've got a pine cone, um, and you've got this stem with three large leaves on it. So the additional stamps are this little group of leaves and this one which could either be leaves or it could be um, an ear of corn. Got lots of words in there too. And then I've also shown you here how those punches look. So you can punch out just some card or you can stamp them and then punch them out. So all in all, I think that's an absolutely fantastic bundle. I am a bit of a sucker for anything with leaves. I think I said that already, leaves and trees, um, I do really love. So that's the beautiful autumn stamp set and the beautiful autumn uh, and the autumn punches. Let me show you the papers that work with this and I'll point out the ones that can be punched out with those punches. Move those out of the way. So this is the Gilded Autumn Speciality Designer Series paper. So this is a pack of 12 sheets of 12 by 12. They're double sided and you get two of each. Um, there are lovely autumn browns in here. There's a soft green and there's also copper and um, gold foiling on it. It's absolutely beautiful. So this one, I don't know if I tilt it and let the light catch it. You can see this is all metallics and these are the images that you can see in your stamp set. So everything coordinates beautifully. On the back um, are these stripes. So this is a really 
useful one either used in small pieces or as a background make a great box as well or a bag the next one is this one which has also got foiling on one side which again I'm hoping you can see as the light catches it so the leaves on this can be punched out with those three punches you've got um, the maple leaf the oak leaf and the acorn so they can all be punched out and you could actually fussy cut out this other little leaf as well which coordinates with the stamp set and on the other side you've got this kind of herringbone chevron design so these are lovely for autumn projects but they're also great for mail cards as well this is mint macaron lovely soft green with copper on it and that's that foliage there and then on the back we've got a hound's tooth check design this one can also be punched out again you've got the the two leaves and the acorns plus that little leaf which you could fussy cut with scissors um, and these are you will have some of these in your make and take pack as well because I punched you some of these out to add to your card this one Again, I hope you can see it's got copper foiling on it and if you look closely you may be able to see that it's the scales on a pine cone just repeated right the way across the sheet so that's a little bit different that one it looks like a pattern but it's actually a pine cone this is stunning I think it's shades of mint macaron with gold foiling on one side and then on the other side we've got leaf images and again many of these are in the stamp set so that's just beautiful I think and then the last design is crumb cake and it looks like somebody's dipped a toothbrush in early espresso ink and then flicked it all over here so you've got the speckles with much less mess and then on the other side you've got some gold foiling with um, pumpkins and gourds and squash so that's a really nice autumnal one so that then is the Gilded Autumn Designer Series paper. It's really stunning paper. Um, I'm going through my second pack already. <laughs> and I'm just quickly going to show you the last few accessory pieces. So this is the brushed metal cardstock. It comes with three colours. So if I have them all together there, you can see the different shades. There's a gold, a copper and a bronze. They are beautiful and they do look as if they've been brushed. I don't know if you can see, but there is a kind of a grain to them that way. So they're shiny, but they're not super shiny. The brushing just adds really nice texture to them and brings out different shades in the metal. So you can die cut these, you can punch them. You can use them in an embossing folder. You can use them as a layer. They're really just beautiful and rich, gorgeous for autumn crafting. So the last few bits in the suite are the ribbons. So there's a, a double ribbon pack. You've got this lovely soft green basket weave ribbon, and then you've got this narrower copper metallic ribbon. They both tie really nicely. So that's the copper one that really holds its shape because it's a bit stiffer this one is just beautiful to work with it's so soft and pretty there we go so that's the two of them tied lovely ribbons and then finally these are the acorn trinkets these are beautiful i'm hoping if i hold them there you can see them these are made um, in copper. They're really weight. I say really weighty. They are weighty, actually. I mean, they they feel like a quality product. These little charms. I think they'd make beautiful earrings. They'd be lovely tied onto cord or ribbon around a parcel. Um, anything like that would would just be gorgeous with these. If you make a box, they'd be lovely on that as well. So really beautiful those acorn trinkets. All right, I think it's time for some crafting. So let me bring in my um, pack and grab my stamp set. So all you will need to add to make your card is ink and a sentiment. So I use Peaceful Moments for mine. Um, if you don't have a sentiment stamp at all, then you could manage 
without. Um, you could just change the design slightly. So this is the card. You can see it's got some of the beautiful metallic paper on it. It's got a strip of the brushed metal foil. I gave you some punched shapes, um, punched out using those new autumn punches, punched out from the patterned paper. And then um, I gave you a couple of labels, so you've got one in case um, something went wrong, you've got a spare. Um, and then I've given you the backing to that. But if you haven't got any words, just leave that label off. You'd still have a pretty card. So here's my pack. So these are all the bits you should have. Are any of you crafting along with me? Let me know if you are. I did include written instructions as well, um, because I know some people like those as extras. So there we go, so that's the written instructions. I've got spare bits in here. Um, I gave myself some extras just in case I messed up on camera. So let's hope I don't, but I, if, if I do, it's not a disaster. All right, so when you open out all the bits in your kit, do watch for these little punched shapes. They very often end up right in the corner of your envelope. So make sure you find those and you put them somewhere safely. I'll put mine over there and hopefully I won't lose them. So you'll have had two of these labels and one of those. These are punched out using the um, timeless label, I think it's called. You've got a piece of patterned paper You've got one of the brushed metallic strips, so do have a look at that before you stick it down and see how lovely it is. And then you've got your card base, and inside that I've popped you an insert. So let's work on the front to start with. I'm going to attach my strip of patterned paper first of all. Now you obviously could have the stripes if you'd rather, but I strongly suspect you won't be able to resist these beautiful metallic leaves. So you can attach it right to the edge or do as I'm doing and leave a little bit of a border. Now you will almost certainly find this is too long. I have tried to give you a little bit of extra length because there's nothing that annoys me more than if I think I've cut something exactly and then I find it's a little bit shorter than my card front. So I tend to cut them on the long side and then all you need to do is just come in and trim like this. So there we go. So you may need to just trim off the bottom of your paper but you will find that it's it will be long enough, it won't be slightly too short. The next thing I'm going to use is my metallic card strip. Try not to get glue on this as you do it. Um, it does mark if you get glue on the front. You can usually get the glue off using a little bit of rubbing alcohol, but it's best to avoid it if you can because sometimes even that will mark it. So make sure you've got clean fingers before you press that strip down. Again, I've butted mine up, but you could leave a little gap if you wanted some of the dark card to show between them. And once again, I've cut it just a tiny bit long. So just turn, turn it over and snip off from the back and that way you can see exactly where you need to be cutting. All right, I'm gonna set that aside for a moment now and work on my label. So I'm gonna bring in one of the vanilla labels, and I'm using a dark brown ink pad, but you can use any ink pad you've got that you think will work with the colours. Black would be fine, um, you might have a different brown, all sorts of things that you could use. Um, and I'm using the Peaceful Moments set because there are so many useful words in this, but you can use any sentiment that you've got at home. So I'm going to just pop that on a clear block. This time I'm making a thank you card. My sample is a birthday card. I'm just going to test that and make sure I've got it straight on the block because sometimes I don't. Yep, yeah, that's straight. So I'm now going to stamp on my label. And as I say, I have given you a spare one of these just in case it all goes horribly wrong. All right, so that's stamped. And then I'm going to bring in my early espresso label which as you can see is exactly the same size but to make it look on my card as if it is larger so you can see here it sticks out and it's over the same color but you may be able to see there it also extends all I'm going to do is cut this in half like that I'm not measuring it I'm just doing it by eye that will be good enough and then what I'm going to do is stick my stamped label on top so that 
the brown extends a little at either end. There will be a gap on the back, but you can't see that when it's on the card. So you can use this for any kind of punched label shape to make it look as if you've actually got it in two sizes when you haven't. So I've just put a little bit of glue on one end. I haven't gone right across because the bit in the middle is not going to have any label stuck on it. And then you can play with this and have as much overlap as you like showing. That looks about right for me. I'm going to repeat that on the other side of the label. And using the liquid glue does mean that I can just slide my pieces and try and get my borders the same each end. So that's my label and I'm going to put that on some dimensionals. You can stick it flat on your card if you'd prefer. Um, I quite like to just pop it up for a little bit of extra interest. Now if you've watched my videos before you'll know that I actually use quite a lot of dimensionals. Um, I have had things arrive to me in the post before, beautiful homemade cards and um, they've just popped a couple of dimensionals on the back and while it's gone through the post office machine it's got squashed because there's nothing supporting it on the back so I always use quite a few dimensionals because I don't want this to squash all right so I'm going to put that there but you can play around with it you can decide where to put it you might be a, a, a greeting in the middle kind of person um, put it wherever it looks right to you I'm going to pop mine down there and I'm going to find those little punched leaf shapes and bring those in. There they are. The first thing I'm going to do is just curl them a little bit with my bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you could use um, a pair of scissors very carefully because you don't want to tear them. And this just makes them look a little bit more alive. So I'm just curling them by pulling them over the edge of my bone folder like that and I tend to do it a little bit that way so I've got the bone folder underneath it and then I turn it over and then do it again so you end up with more of an S shape I don't know if that's going to show, it's awfully small to show but um, it just gives them a little bit of movement so then I've got some of the mini stamping dimensionals here um, if you haven't got these you can use the larger ones and just cut them up or cut a section of the edge strip that's the right size but I've got the little ones so that's quite handy and I'm just going to pop a couple of those on the back of each of my leaves and to make sure that it's not going to show on the front and again you could stick your leaves flat and that would be fine um, I quite like mine popped up so now I'm going to just decide where I want to put them. So I've got a green one. You may have a green one, you may not. Um, you might have two brown leaves. It just depended what there was because there was a mixture of everything um, in the paper. So I think, I think something like that. Yeah, like that. So I'm now going to just place them one at a time. And of course you can pop your leaves and acorn anywhere that looks right to you. Taking the back off is always a challenge when I'm doing it live, <laughs> especially with these little ones. There we go. And then I'm going to pop the acorn down the bottom. There we go. So that is my card front finished. And on my sample one, I literally just stamped inside happy birthday the same as I had on the front I'm actually going to leave my inside of this card blank as I've made a thank you card um, and then I can write inside when I know who I'm sending it to um, I can actually write my thanks in a bit more detail inside but you can stamp on the inside uh, whatever you fancy whatever works for you and that's my insert it's great to use an insert for lots of reasons first of all if you are stamping it you can stamp it before you pop it inside and then if you make a mistake you haven't ruined your card because this is separate before you've added it um, it also adds some strength and if you've made a card where the front is very heavy then adding a layer on the back will help to stop the card falling over and obviously on something as dark as this it's much easier to write on it 
So there we go. Those are my two versions of the make and take card you've got. If you make it, do send me a photograph. Um, I would really love to see what you made with your kit because there will be quite a lot of variation depending on which stamps you used and how you placed your leaves and your label and everything else. I hope you've enjoyed this whip through the new catalogue and a little bit of crafting and also seeing some of the, the items much closer up because I think no matter how good a catalogue for uh, photography is, it's never as good as actually seeing things. Um, I hope very much to see you back here at 12.30, but if you can't come at 12.30, the videos will still be here throughout today and also tomorrow. And then once the videos are finished showing on Facebook, uh, you'll be able to look at them on YouTube as well. So again, a plea that if you've got crafty friends, if you can share either from Facebook or share from YouTube, that would be absolutely brilliant. And I really look forward to seeing you again later. I'll have a good look through the comments. And if there's any questions that I haven't answered, I'll make sure to do that. But thank you so much for joining me. Um, have a lovely day. I know we're talking about autumn and Christmas, even though it's August. Um, but they'll be here before you know it. You know they will. <laughs> I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.